Hey, what's going on everybody? Welcome back to Collecting Casually. I'm Ryan, and in this video, we're going to take a look at my top 10 Bronze Age key comics from the 1970s. This one is definitely my favorite in this group of comics from the Bronze Age from the 1970s. And that's, now this happens to be a tag video. And if you don't know what a tag video is, it's essentially one creator that makes a video. Maybe it's their top five, top 10, maybe it's their favorite books of a certain genre. And they go ahead and list those out. And then they tag a couple creators in the end of their video to say, hey, I wanna take a look at what you have in this genre. I was lucky enough to be tagged by Colossus Collector here on YouTube, and as his name suggests, he's a big Colossus and X-Men fan. Definitely take a look at his top 10 Bronze Age video that he made last week. He's got a pretty amazing number one in his video. Now this certain tag video of Bronze Age books from the 1970s was started by Comic Collector Geeks, so be sure to check out his video and channel as well. I'll be sure to link all of these in the description below. All right, starting things off at number 10, Red Sonja number one in my CGC 8.5 white pages. Now Red Sonja number one came out in January of 1977 and features the first appearance of Red Sonja in a solo series. I believe I picked up this graded copy of Red Sonja from a Bronze and Modern Gods live Instagram sale a while back um, and was super happy to add this to my collection. It was one of my first um, graded books that I ever had, so kind of uh, holds a nice place in my collection uh, sentimentally. All right, coming in at number nine is Swamp Thing number one. This came out in October of 1972 and features the first appearance of the second Swamp Thing and also some amazing Bernie Wrightson art on the cover. Now this copy of Swamp Thing, I actually picked up from a Facebook Marketplace ad for some comic books for sale. And I already made a video about this haul and the seller of these comics actually wanted this copy of Swamp Thing back afterwards. I made a video about this already. It's one of my top videos on my channel, so be sure to check that out if you haven't seen it already. I'm sure you will enjoy it. Um, unfortunately, this copy has some tape pulls here on the cover that uh, take away quite a bit of color and and uh, also quite a few spine ticks. So it's not in amazing shape, but I'm still happy to have it in my collection and that's why it comes in at number nine. All right, coming in at number eight, we have Spider-Woman issue number one from April of 1978. Now this features the new costume and origin story of Spider-Woman. I know I picked this copy up uh, early on in my resurgence of collecting again. I got this, I think off of an Instagram live sale, but I do know that I got it from Skeleton Key Comics. This is another book that I'm happy to have in my collection and I actually picked it twice when I was putting together this top 10 list and when I was going through making sure I had everything in order realized that I had two of them picked out um, and decided to pull this one out because it was in the best shape um, but definitely a book I will always pick up when I find it at an affordable price all right coming in at number seven is X-Men 131 from March of 1980 this is one of those books that uh, actually came out in 1980 but right up here we see 1979 so I'm considering this counts for the 1970s book this is the first cover appearance of Emma Frost as White Queen and we definitely have an awesome team up with John Byrne and Chris Claremont teamed up on this book. This comic also features the second appearance of Dazzler and I picked this one up as well from a live sale from Skeleton Key Comics a few years ago. If you haven't picked up on this already, there are a lot of leading lady characters on the cover of these books in my top 10 list of Bronze Age comics from the 1970s. And Ms. Marvel number one comes in at number six and continues that trend. Now this comic came out in January of 1977 and features the first appearance of Carol Danvers as Ms. Marvel. The cover features artwork by John Romita and Dick Giordano. I think I picked this up at a local show a few years back um, for a pretty decent price. I think I paid maybe $50 for this at the time. Um, it's not in crazy amazing shape. It definitely has some creases along the top here, some spine ticks, but another book I'm happy to have in the collection. All right, we're into the top 10 and the first of a few Amazing Spider-Man books is The Amazing Spider-Man number 135. This book came out in October of 1971 and features the third appearance of Punisher and an awesome John Romita Sr. cover. Now this is definitely a beat up copy of this book. Down in the bottom corner here, there is a quite a large chunk of the cover out of the book as well as along the top a lot of chipping there uh spine ticks but i picked this up at a local comic con two summers ago for just 15 dollars and i actually passed it up when i first um took a look at it i don't know why i passed up on it 
Uh, but once I realized uh, how good of a deal that was, I uh, ran back from the other side of the show and asked if they still had it. They sure did, and I grabbed it for 15 bucks. So pretty awesome story for this number five, Amazing Spider-Man number 135. Coming in at number four on my list is a book that had a lot of popularity in the last few weeks, and that is Uncanny X-Men number 130, the first appearance of Dazzler. This book is another one that has a uh, February of 1980 release date, but again, the cover art shows 1979, so I'm figuring it counts in my list. We also have that awesome team up again of John Byrne and Chris Claremont on this book as well. This one happens to be a newsstand copy. I have another newsstand as well, um, and I think maybe a direct edition in my collection somewhere. I don't know if they ever sorted it out, but I think it would be amazing if we saw Taylor Swift show up in Deadpool 3 like some of the rumors were. Um, and if so, I'm happy to have this book in my collection, and hopefully it uh, goes up in value a bit because I think that would be a pretty awesome uh, cameo appearance for sure. All right, coming in at number three is Amazing Spider-Man 101. This book is from October of 1971, and this features the first appearance of Morbius, and it features awesome pencil work by Gil Kane on the cover and inking done by John Romita. I picked up my copy of Amazing Spider-Man 101 at a local comic book shop. They had actually gotten this book back in a recovery from the local police department. This collection of books had been stolen years ago. They finally made it through all of the process um, with evidence and things like that. So they had gotten all these comic books back. I just happened to be in the shop when they were kind of going through it, saw that they had this one come in and I was sure to uh, like hang out and uh, find out when they were going to put this book out on the shelves. So I was able to pick it up for a pretty nice deal. It is pretty beat up. Still, it's a pretty awesome comic to have in my collection and that's why it comes in at number three. All right, coming in at number two is a book that showed a lot of popularity last year with the uh, release of the TV show on Disney Plus, and that is Savage She-Hulk issue number one, February 1980, but it does have that 1979 date on the cover, so I'm counting it in my list. This is the first appearance and origin of She-Hulk. This is one of those books that I'm really excited to have in my collection. That's why it comes in at number two. I think the TV show was amazing. I know a lot of people didn't like it, but me and my family had a great time watching it. Um, and I'm really happy to have the origin story of She-Hulk in my collection. All right, here we are. We are at number one. And this one is definitely my favorite in this group of comics from the Bronze Age from the 1970s. And that's Amazing Spider-Man number 194. This book came out in July of 1979 and is the first appearance of Black Cat. And I have a copy that is CGC graded in an 8.0 with off-white to white pages. I picked up my copy of this book from a local comic book shop a few years ago, along with my Secret Wars 8 and my Amazing Spider-Man 252. All right, so that was my top 10 there. A lot of awesome books. And when I was searching through my collection to find books from the Bronze Age, I had no problem finding Bronze Age keys. However, when I had to narrow it down to 70s books, that's when it became a little bit harder. And, uh, you know, I kind of cheated on some of them that have 1979 on the front of the cover, even though they were released in early 1980. This was an awesome challenge. And I'm so happy that Ryan over at Colossus Collector uh, tagged me in his video and I'm ready to pass the torch to three more creators here on YouTube. I'm really excited to see what they come up with for their lists. All right, and in no particular order, here are the three channels I am tagging in my video. First up is Speed Metal Comics. He's another Canadian creator, just like Ryan over at Colossus Collector. And he has some awesome videos of some amazing books and collections that he buys. So definitely check him out. And I'm really excited to see what he can come up with for this video. Second up is Why Not Comics here on YouTube. He adds that Southern flair to his YouTube videos. He really releases content all the time, checking out antique malls, flea markets, things like that, always finding amazing books and bringing them to the community. Definitely check him out and I'm excited to see what he adds to this video. I know he's got some cool books from this uh, time frame, so really excited to see what he has. All right, last up in my tag challenge is There Can Only Be Vaughn slash King Midas Comics. He has an awesome channel where he shows off all of his comics that he's gotten throughout the week. Definitely an awesome video and channel you can watch and just kind of have on listening and you know just kind of chilling out, uh, bagging and boarding. I love bagging and boarding comics and watching his channel. So be sure to check him out and I'm excited to see what he has to offer for this challenge. All right, well, that's gonna wrap up my top 10 Bronze Age comics from the 1970s. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up. Let me know in the comments below what you thought was the best book out of my 10. And if you wanna see more content like this, be sure you subscribe to my channel. As always, I appreciate you watching and we'll catch you in the next video.